pray that you shift this atmosphere right now, Father God. Holy Spirit, I ask you to come here right now. Holy Spirit, fall, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, do a new thing. Do a great thing. Do a mighty thing in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, I thank you, God, for every mother here, God. I thank you, Father God, for every mother on their way. I thank you for every mother that is watching online, Father God. I thank you that before, Father God, they were mothers, Father God. It says that we are all your children, God. And so, Lord, I thank you, God. I praise you, Father God. I thank you, God, that you meet us in the, in the crevices of the places that we need, Father God. I thank you that you are faithful beyond anything, God. I thank you, God, that foremost and first off, Father God, we are your child, Father God. It says you do not forget about one, Father God, that you literally run after that one, God. And so, Lord, I thank you, God. Lord, I praise you, God. I thank you for who you are, God. I thank you that you're an amazing God. I thank you that you are above, Father God. I thank you, God, that you are the head, Father God, of our lives, God. I thank you that you have a reason and a purpose for us, God. I thank you, Father God, that in you, Father God, we have purpose to live, God. And so, Lord, I praise you, God. Lord, I pray that this atmosphere change, God. I pray for those needs and desires that are being asked for, Father God, that this is your, your, your ground, your fertile ground, Father God. God, I pray as the word goes forth today, God, that you do a new thing, God. Do a new thing in my life, Father God. Do a new thing in every person's life here, God. Everyone watching online, God, let them know that you have a reason, God. The fact that we have breath in our mouth, God. The fact that we can sing your praise, God. The fact, Father God, that we know, God, you will never leave nor forsake us, God. Oh, Jesus, I thank you, God. I bow down, Father God. I adore your name, God. There is no one like you, God. You know me like no one else, God. You know us like no one else, God. You know what we pray for in our prayer closets, God. And so, Lord, because of that, we wait on you, God. It says that those who wait on you, God, that they shall renew their strength, God. They shall mount up on wings like eagles, God. And so, Lord, I wait, God. I wait in anticipation for you, God. I wait because of you, God, all things are good. I wait because it says you withhold no good thing, God. I wait because you know me like no one else, God. Lord, it says you formed me in my mother's womb, God. And so because of that, I am grateful, God. I am grateful to you, God. Oh, Father God, I pray right. I pray right now for those who are seeking God. I pray for those who aren't mothers yet, God. I pray, God, that you bless them, God. Your word in Isaiah says, single barren one, God. And so, Lord, I know, God, that nothing, Father God, nothing, God, can escape you, God. And so, Lord, I pray for those women today, God, those women that are seeking God, those women who are praying, God. It says that Mary was highly favored, God, and because you overcame her, God, your glory overcame her, God. The woman who was once barren, Father God, carried the most high, God. And so, Lord, show us, God, that in us there's amazing things, God. We can carry the most high, God. We do carry the most high, God. And so, Lord, I praise you, God. And I praise you for the single mothers out there, God. God, I thank you, God, that you care about them too, God. I thank you, God, that you do an amazing thing in their life, God. I, pray, I thank you, God, because you're their gyra, God. You're their provider, God. I thank you that you're their husband, God. I thank you that you're their kinsman redeemer, God. God, they might feel different, God. They might feel different from those that, you know, in society, God. But God, you care, God. And that's all that matters, God. You care, God. You are the almighty God. And you have the final say, God. And because you have the final say, God, there's amazing things to come, Father God. God, there's amazing things to come, God. God, I lay my life at your feet, God. I glorify you.
Happy Mother's Day, Mama. Happy Mother's Day, Mama O'Cheney. God bless you. Thank you so much for loving Happy us. Happy Mother's Day. And, and just been an amazing blessing to us. Are you all ready to praise God this morning? Now, listen, this morning we're taking you back home, right? Now, I know some people saw our outfit and like, what's going on here. Even Pastor Tim is wearing pride today. We got him. But listen, we're going back home this morning. Are you all ready? Somebody give God a dance. Let's go. One time. Let's go. Hey. Now, we're just a familiar. So I'm all familiar, but we're gonna prove this one. Put your hands together, tutu, like Nigeria, let's go. Tutu, come on now. Tutu, come on now, say. Hey, come on now, say. Hey, hey. Are you ready? PT, what's safe, what's safe, what's safe, don't worry. Hey. One thing we ask of you. Thrown our God on high. Are you all ready? Simple dance, I promise. No, no, no harm. Now you take it, take it. 
from the ground and put him up. Listen, when Tony got this morning of our lives, of our jobs, of our situations, are y'all ready? Let's go. Say one, two, three from the ground. Hey, and put him up right there. One more time, say hey. And where? Put him up. Up. Hey, hey, hey. One more time. Good. Alright, let's go. I said, I said we.
for those of you that are not Nigerians, it's okay. Listen, we're about to take you on a quick trip to Africa real quick. Listen. You have done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. Just, just, you say. No. It's okay. One more time. If I had 10,000 tons, it still won't be enough. Just, 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 you say.
I want you to lift your hands. Now you're going to cry this next morning. You're going to say, You are helper. Ah, you are helper. Whatever that means to you, to your family or your job. Come on, sing it. Helper. Ah, you are helper. You are Now, in your health, you're going to say, you are a healer, you are a healer. Come on. The root of cancer is destroyed. You are. Jesus, you are. You are a healer. Alpha and Omega. You are healer, you are healer, Abba. Then this last one, you're going to scream it. Abba, Father, Abba, Father. Abba, Father. Father of the fatherless. Abba, Father. Abba, Father. Jesus. That's who you are. You know, saints, when when the Lord was going to send Moses, Moses said, who shall I say sent me? And the Lord answered and said, I am that I am. In other words, I'll be what you need me to be when you need me to be. And so to some, he's your helper. To some, he's your healer. I like to call him the most high God. That he reigns over everything. I don't know what God has been to you. But why don't you just take the next two minutes and glorify him. And bless the name of the Lord. If he saved you, if he's helped you, if he's delivered you, if he's provided for you, Lord, I bless your holy name. I glorify you. I exalt you. Spirit of the living God. You're such an amazing God. Saints, I want us to say a prayer that haunted me all of yesterday. And later on in the day, I found out why. But in Genesis 30 and verse 22, the Bible says, And the Lord remembered Rachel and opened her womb. I don't know who this word is for, but it delivered me yesterday. God has remembered you. And your womb has been opened. 
with everything that I have for whatever reason it didn't click yesterday that the Lord is opening your womb in Mother's Day male, female, it doesn't matter what it is that there's something on the inside of you that you have to deliver and God is saying I've opened your womb I've opened your womb I've opened your womb Lord I thank you for your word of knowledge this morning oh God I receive that word. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. Lord, I bless your holy name. Father, we glorify you. Lord, we exalt you. Because that which you say you do, you always do. Thank you that you're not a man to lie, neither are you the son of man to repent. If you said it, you will do it. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. Can we just lift up our hands in praise? and in worship and just thank the Lord for open wombs thank the Lord for open doors for open gates for open seasons Lord I say thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you for opening up my womb Lord I bless your holy name Thank you for opening the womb of ALC. Lord, we bless your holy name. Father, we glorify you. We exalt you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name we've worshipped. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. If the Lord has done anything for you, why don't you bless the name of the Lord this morning? Why don't you glorify him? Oh, you can do so much better than that. Why don't you clap? Why don't you shout? Why don't you jump and shout out to God with a voice of triumph? I don't know about you, but God delivered me. I don't know about you, but God protected me. God provided for me. He blessed me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our God is good. Amen. Amen. Happy Mother's Day. Give someone a hug. God bless you. Welcome them to the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We serve such an amazing God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I want to wish every mother happy Mother's Day. Every mother-to-be, every expecting mother, every auntie, every surrogate mom, bonus mom, grandma. The Lord bless you. Happy, happy, happy Mother's Day. Uh, mothers are just amazing, amazing people. And we're going to be celebrating Mother's Day all through the day. As you can see, we had an uh, all-male choir, an uh, all-male praise team to serenade the ladies. They rejected my application, but that's okay. Happy, happy, happy Mother's Day. Uh, my heart is overjoyed this morning. Uh, so many friends and family. Auntie Ade, God bless you. Thank you so much for joining. Amen. Amen. Today we have what I know is bound to be a twin blessing. Uh, you know, some people come into your life and you know your life will never, never, never be the same again. And today I know we're just so blessed. Uh, today and next week because we have amazing, amazing, amazing people uh, in the house this morning. Uh, if you've met me, it doesn't take long uh, to hear the name FD. And um, for me, while that is important is because don't tell me who you're over until you tell me who you're under. Um, I'm, I'm so, so, so big on accountability. I'm so big on, on submission. 
and, and there's no voice from a spiritual standpoint that I respect, that I listen to, and I take to heart more than FBs. And it's <laughs> amazing the little things. You know, when he came this morning, first thing he said, Pity, I love the logo. Um, and, and it reminds me of the meeting we had whilst we were about to rebrand all of ALC, and that was one of the things that came up. And it's amazing that he saw it uh, just like that. FB, thank you so much for joining, being in the house today. Um, I have a lot to say, but I'll save it for, for next week. Uh, today's Mother's Day. Uh, I want to wish <laughs> my mom in absence, Mama T, a happy, happy Mother's Day. Uh, God bless you. Just amazing, amazing, amazing woman. Uh, I want to wish the mother of my three amazing children a happy Mother's Day. Dr. Anna, God bless you. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you so much for all the sacrifices uh, that you, you make for our family. Uh, just taking care of our family, all our children, including me. Thank you very much. Uh, you're amazing. Thank you. I love you. Uh, but today... <laughs> Uh, we have an amazing mother uh, that's going to be bringing the word this morning. And uh, she's just a force to reckon with. Uh, it's, 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 it's funny, my very, 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 very first time that I met her. And so we tease FD because I met TFD before PFD. That's what ALC calls you, not FD. It's PFD. Pastor Feladriote. So, but I met... Um, <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> I, I met uh, TFD the very first time um, at my sister's wedding over 18 years ago. Wow, you guys are getting old. <laughs> yeah. Um, but she had come to do um, Toki's makeup and she was pregnant with her third son. And I was just amazed. At, at the professionalism, the, uh, the, the diligence that she showed. You know, most people at that stage, you know, you have so many other people that can do it. You can say I'm pregnant, you know, but she came very, very personal touch. Um, and if you know anything uh, about her, you can check her Wikipedia page later on, but House of Tara International, it's... It's... Um, it's, it's a Nigerian legacy, I call it, um, because, again, it's, it's, it's brought praise and honor to the country. Uh, the first Nigerian makeup school, she's trained as an attorney, but really a serial entrepreneur. Um, she's tired. Ms. TFD is one of those people that if she wants something, she's going to get it. Uh, nothing is stopping her, and I love it. I love it. Um, such an amazing, phenomenal leader. Uh, beyond that, just God bless you. Uh, amazing amazing wife i know because fd talks about you so much um and the mother of three amazing sons uh super humble uh, no airs around her uh she's she has everything that anyone would ask for you know trained in seed yale harvard you name it um she 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 has all of it she was just humble humble. You know, I'll never forget one of the times uh, she was staying at my house. She had come to receive an award that um, forget if it was CBS, but one of the TV stations was carrying. And she's like, oh, PT, come on, come on. And we are all gathered in my living room watching her. And that's it. And after that, it's like, what's for lunch? Let's go out. And I'm looking like, um, I'm not sure you just realized you were live on TV, you know. Um, but that's who she is. Just uh, down to earth. But beyond that, an amazing amazing, amazing Christian, an amazing woman of God who takes to prayer, uh, who takes to motherhood. And so, saints, I'm expectant, and I want you to be too, because beyond everything I can say, my prayer is that the Spirit of God will introduce Mrs. Ta Feladurotoye to you. And so, saints, with the joy of God, rise up as we give a warm ALC welcome to my sister, Miss Tara Fela Durotoy. Father, I thank you 
so much. Thank you for the privilege to serve your people this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for a voice. Thank you for a message. Thank you that your word transforms, heals, delivers, sets people free. Your word is a jailbreaker. Thank you because today people will be elevated more than they've ever imagined in, their, in the name of Jesus. Thank you because eyes will be opened. Mothers will see, fathers will see, children will see. You reveal to them the way only you can. Holy Ghost, take full control of this atmosphere. Be present. Touch my lips. Let my lips be for your service and only for your service. Let all that I say edify you and give you glory. And at the end of today, we'll look back and say, for a truth, we met with Jehovah, Yahweh, the keeper of covenant. Blessed be your name forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. Good morning, Papa T. It's nice to see you. Pity, you know I love you so much. Uh, you guys should help me thank PT and Dr. Emma. Yes, for the platform, but especially for being a covering over our son who's here in the US. You know, when I met uh, Toki and, and I went to the Tychos family uh, 19 years ago, I remember coming back home and saying to Fela, there was something special about this family. And you know, when you've been doing makeup for people, makeup is such a personal se service that you are constantly in people's personal space. And as a person of the spirit, sometimes when you walk into certain places, you just know by the spirit. And that was my encounter with them. And I was, you know one of those, you desire to culture that relationship? Unfortunately, they don't live in Nigeria, so I didn't see them again. But as God would have it, I had had the conversation with Fela, so he remembers it so well. Because obviously you go, you come back, you tell him what happened and all of that, and different things and experiences. But this one, I kept saying, there was such a strong presence of God in the home. And I was like, who are these people? I don't get it. Like, what is it about them? And then years after, Fela uh, met them again, and this time they told him. I was like, it's that same family. <laughs> you know, so I was saying to Dr. Enna yesterday, um, I'm one of those mothers. My mother teases that in my last life, I didn't have children. So when I came back, when I now had one, it was like, eh, come and stay here. Two, oh my God, three, hey. And so I generally don't like my children to go to anybody's home. But here, we can have him. <laughs> I have dashed you. Um, and, and thank you for the love, the commitment. Um, yesterday we were just at lunch and Anna just walks and says, how is your cough? And I was like, hey, that's a mother. <laughs> she knows that he has a cough and she has something to sort it out. You know, moms are always ready to sort everything out. Right, so thank you very, very, very much. And Toki, it's lovely to see you again. You know, our intercessor, our mother in the house, thank you, thank you, thank you for all that you do and the love and commitment. And my darling, Feladro Toi. Eshingwo. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. I have your ballet teacher now, by the way. So the next time you guys sing and I'm ministering here, I'll be speaking in full Yoruba. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this morning, um, just thinking about Mother's Day, I, I bumped into this beautiful ode by um, Benson Idausa's daughter, Reb is her name. And she says, to happily heavily pregnant moms, to mothers who have lost their children, to children who have lost their mothers, to women who are yearning to be moms but are unable to be so in this season, to women who are mothers to children who are not biologically their own, to single moms, to divorced moms who are dealing with rejection, abandonment, and shame to widowed, single, and divorced fathers who now are mothering as well, to widows, widowed moms who are now courageously clocking another anniversary without the love of their lives, to mothers who are lonely in nursing homes and will die alone today, to incarcerated moms who are nursing the conscience of regret 
to the mothers of the Chibok girls who have not seen their daughters in over nine agonizing years, to daughters who have complicated relationships with their mothers, to mothers who have aborted children and are tormented by that decision, to children who have aborted mothers for what they believe is an unpardonable sin, to mothers who give up children for adoption and are riddled with regret, to mothers who abandoned their children and are longing for a second chance, to mothers who are physically present but are mentally checked out in pain, to women who were raped into motherhood and somehow found within themselves to bear their pain, to all the mothers of war, to broken, healing, and whole mothers, to my mother, to my sisters, to my daughter, may grace find you. I thought it was very interesting that the lady who led prayers this morning was also very inclusive in the prayers as she prayed for mothers. And I think that we must think about that because that's how our God is. He's thinking about all the mothers, not just the ones who are in their homes, it's the ones who have, you know, gone through different phases on their motherhood journey. And so we just wanted to say, may grace find you. God bless. So I'm here, um, I usually get invited to speak as an entrepreneur. Generally, I've been an entrepreneur for 25 years. Uh, but today, as Mother's Day, I figure that um, I'm here also because I'm a mom. And I look at my 22 years of marriage, and I think about multiple pregnancies. I think about cesarean sections. I think about postnatal depression, surgery for one child, hospitaliza hospitalization for one child, speech thera therapy sessions for one child character forming sessions, Bible teaching, disciplining seasons, manners teaching, use your fork and knife seasons, <laughs> finding school seasons to find the right school for each child that fits them, bullying, peer pressure, after school activities, swimming, piano, and all the likes, school visits, PTAs, college choices, career choices, fears, and gra gladness, and trying to set a good example, and now adjusting to being an empty nester. When I look at the, my entire trajectory, I, I, rec I reflect again that motherhood is such a beautiful place to be, but it can be such a stressful place to be. The stressful experience can be. I remember my third child, actually, somebody, who was one of those days I was picking him up from school, and he looked at me and said, Mom, is it hard being a mom? And you know when a child asks you that, it's because they see you clearly overwhelmed, and my response was yes. However, I want to bring a word today, and that word is birthing the promise. Birthing the promise. So yes, things that are excellent, amazing, don't come easy. They don't come easy. If you're going to be a successful entrepreneur, you have to put in the work, it doesn't happen overnight. Sometimes they may look like an overnight success, but no, if you check it out, they put in hours. We look at Ronaldo and we hear that he invests five hours every day in working on his skill. Five hours committed, five to six hours every day, every single day. How can that be possible? But that effort is what you see when you see all his accolades. And you say he's exceptional, he's exceptional because of the amount of work that he's putting. And if you think about the amount of work that he's putting, it is equal to the results that you see. So mothers, don't produce children and birth children without going through. And sometimes, you know, I always tease my husband. I said, when men use the example of childbirth to explain something, I'm like, you guys don't even. <laughs> I can see everybody's head shaking. No. 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 But it also, so for those of us who have experienced it, whether we've experienced the nine months of carrying each child gives you an idea of what you're carrying. It is a promise. It is a promise. If you think about how you transition in your taste buds, for example, like crazy. I want to eat fried roasted yam from Falomo. Falomo. Why Falomo? Why follow on? 8.30 p.m. 
And if you send anybody to go and buy it, then it's not sweet. This person, this man, is the man that has to go and get it. If you think about that, if you think about even the process of going to the hospital on the day that you want to have that baby, and the fear that would I go in and come out alive? Would I die? And you know, sometimes when you're actually pregnant, you hear more stories about women who have died during childbirth. For some reason, it's as if all those gist, that's when you will hear it. <laughs> and you carry that fear with you to that theater, and you just pray that you come out alive. I remember having, having my first, and when I saw him, I just wept. I wept because I thought, I made it. Like, I didn't die. I can see the child. But it then shows the degree of promise that we carry, of people, lives that we carry, and the transformation that we have the capacity to effect is simply because we are the carriers of a promise. And I know the devil has tried to attack us one way or the other. But what we now know is, what we now have is knowledge. And that knowledge is the ability to be able to set ourselves free from that bondage. And to say, who are we, tr who are we truly? And what can we be? Especially as carriers of a promise. God is very, very intent and is very interested in families. He's interested in families. He loves men. He loves women. He loves children. He wants to give a man a covenant. And he calls Abraham and shares that covenant with that man. But he also says, this covenant I'm sharing with you is only going to happen because a woman is going to carry the seed of that covenant and bring it forth. That seed that is part of that covenant will come and do transformational things. But that seed, again, will be a carrier of a covenant and birth a covenant and a promise and then produce a seed. And that seed, again, will be the carrier of a covenant. And the cycle goes on and on and on. And this is how he has designed the world. So men are important. Women are important. Children are important. And I want us to just look at Genesis chapter 12, verse, verse 3. Genesis 17, verse 21. John 1, 9. Okay. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you shall all the families of the earth shall, and of the earth shall be blessed. I look at the word families there. Families, families. God is interested in families. It is through families that values are set in our society. And every time we see a distortion in the society, usually it's a breaking of the family unit. Every time we see strong values, many times it's because we are product of a strong family. So God is interested in families. And what and his interest in families is his calling men to say, I'm calling you to be a blessing. And I will call you to be a blessing because I have called you as a man. But I also want you to know that that blessing that I've called, I'm calling you to, a woman, is going to be the one that will carry that seed and birth it. Can we go to um, Genesis 17, 21? But my covenant I will establish with Isaac, whom Sarah shall birth to you at this set time next year. If you remember the story of Abraham and how God told him, he said to him, at some point Abraham said, what's going to happen to this, my child Ishmael? And God said, don't worry, I'll bless him. I'll make him prosperous. He will give birth to princes. But the child that Sarah, who is the child of promise? Who is the woman of promise? The child that she will produce, she will bring forth, is the one that is a carrier of a promise. I want the women who are here today, who have been born by the blood of Jesus Christ, to know that the seed that you carry is a seed that has a promise. And if you under, have that understanding, how you nurture that seed is different. You will nurture the way the world nurtures. You will nurture the way the, the world nurtures. The name that you will name the child will not be just another name. It will be a prophecy coming to pass. 
it to be a word of prophecy coming to pass. Can we just go to Judges chapter 13? This is one of the stories I would like to share. I'll share a few others, but let me just share the story from Judges chapter 13. Let's start from verse 2. Are you going to show that? Okay. Um, and bear a son. Now, therefore, please be careful not to drink wine or similar drinks. So this is a story of Samson. And um, the conversation is between the angel who God had sent to Samson's mother when he was born. He said, now, therefore, please be careful not to drink wine or similar drink and not to eat anything unclean. For behold, you shall conceive and bear a son and no razor shall come upon his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb and he shall begin to deliver Israel. What verse is that? Can we move? And the angel of the Lord, and the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said, Indeed, now you are barren and have borne no child, for you shall conceive and bear a son. No. Judges, Judges 13. Keep going. Okay. And behold, you shall conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come upon his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Go on. So the woman came and told her husband, saying, A man of God came to me, and his countenance was like the countenance of the angel of God. Very awesome. But I did not ask him where he was from, and he did not tell me his name. And he said to me, Behold, you shall conceive and bear a son. Now drink no wine or similar drink, nor eat anything unclean, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. Then Moab prayed to the Lord and said, Oh, my Lord, please let the man of God whom you sent come to us again and teach us what we shall do for the child who will be born. There are many stories in the scriptures of women who gave birth. And many times there were certain instructions that were given to them about this child that they were going to give birth to. Whether it was Mary, who an angel appeared to, or Elizabeth, who also an angel appeared to, there are multiple stories of women birthing what you would call unusual, having some unusual encounters when they birth a child. For me, I think every child is special. And many times the Bible is a lot of symbolisms of the things that we can also act we can also understand and see and in seeing that over and over again I said to myself if I consider the children that I have and each one of them what was the encounter that I had with God it may not be that an angel came to me but many times there was something that happened when you conceived that child and in remembering those things that happen you know that there's an encounter that you've had with God and therefore that child that you carry is special and that's why it becomes difficult for many times for women to say, let me compare this child to this child, because they're all different. And what is required for one child is different from the, what's required for another child. So my call to mothers today is to say, that seed that you carried, that you are carrying, that you will still carry, is special. I want you to know that you've had an encounter. It may not be a supernatural encounter like you saw an angel, but it is an encounter. If you think about the process of going through and birthing that child, you will know it's not ordinary. If you went to the gates of childbirth and you came back alive, if you carried the child for nine months, even if you had a miscarriage, you know it wasn't normal. It wasn't a typical thing. It wasn't, and so sometimes people say, get over it. You can't get over it because it's, it's that experience, an unusual experience. And if we think about that, we must understand that carrying every child that we carry, that child is a promise. The process may be gruesome, but the joy in front is something that we should look forward to in rejoicing. But when we now birth this promise, what do we do? And I would like us to think about this. And I, one of the stories I think about is the story of Timothy. And when Paul said to him, he said to him, you know, you are someone who I've seen, you've grown, but I see the pro you are the product of Eunice and Lois. Eunice and Lois, grandma and mother. Mothers, we can't carry and deliver our children 
and bring them to this world, just leave them. No. We have to train them. And in training them, training them with the word. We must. And training them with the word is exposing them to the word, teaching them what they need to know. One of them is to teach them values. And to teach them to value people. But also teach them to leave value with people. Number one, teach them to have values. Teach them to value people. But also teach them to leave value with people. I want us to look at Wesley, the Wesley brothers. There was a short um, letter that their mother had written that I saw and I wanted to share. Now, her husband had left her, so she was here raising, I think, nine children by herself. And she wrote this, and I would like to sh read this out, but also share a few things from my own story. She said, I am a woman, but I'm also the mistress of a large family. And though the superior charge of the souls contained in it lies upon me, Yet, in your long absence, can we read with me, please? Yet, in your long absence, I cannot but look upon every soul you leave under my charge as a talent committed to me under a trust. Can we say that again? I cannot but look upon every soul you leave a talent committed to me under a trust. I'm not a man, nor a minister. Yet, as a mother and a mistress, I felt I ought to do more than I had yet done. Go on. I resolved to begin with my own children, in which I observed the following method. I take such a proportion of time as I can spare every night to discuss with each child apart. On Monday, I talk with Molly. On Tuesday, with Hetty. Wednesday, with Nancy. Thursday, with Jackie. Friday, with Patty. Saturday, with Charles. This is the mother of Charles and John Wesley, the founders of the Methodist movement. She said, I was not, I'm, not a minister, I'm not a minister, I'm, I'm just an ordinary woman. But I have come to understand that, the, that everyone, every child in my custody is a talent that has been committed to me in trust. That every child that is born from your, from your loins is committed to trust to you. In such a manner that you ask yourself, how can I ensure that this child delivers, brings value to the world? That commitment as mothers we have to make. And I'm sure many of us have made that commitment. This is another opportunity for us to make the commitment again. So number one, how do we ensure that our children place value in people? First of all, place value in themselves. I have a th th uh, thing I used to do with my children. I'd ask them, everyone sit down. I go on the internet, look for words. And I ask each child, when I read this word, I want you to tell me if it reminds you of yourself. And then you write it down. What I was trying to do was trying to teach them at an early age self-awareness of who they are and the value that they bring everywhere they go. So if I say generous, you write it down if you think you're generous. If I say charismatic, you write it down if you think you're charismatic. Now, every time you're not sure, just asterisk it and we'll discuss it, right? And every time we go through those words, each child writes it down. What I'm basically saying is you are a person of value. And I want you to be aware of the value that you bring in every relationship that you come across. In any place that you are, I want you to see the value that you bring. Also, what you're basically saying to the child is, as much as I am a person of value, I will begin to look at other people and see the value in them. And in seeing the value in them, it makes me appreciate people as well. So I treat people better because I see value in them. The reason why many times we hear people criticize and you know, be rude and insulted is because sometimes people don't see value in others. And it's always also about their upbringing. It's how they've been, they've been raised. So I want you to see value in yourself, but I want you to see value in others. But I also want you to leave value at the table. 
So every time you have an encounter with someone, I want them not to forget you. I want them to remember you as someone that brought value to them. As you go along, leave virtue on the table. But seeing value in others, bringing value to others, leaving value, value in people is one step. But the question for us is how do we do it? How? Number one is first of all, the example that we set. Because children, I found, don't learn just by what you see, what you say, even though what you say is very important. You know, I was one of those mothers that I used to tell my children, I repeat things. I repeat, I just do this, and I will repeat it over and over again. And, you know, sometimes, now that they are older, when they, I want to say, they will tell me what I'm about to say. Because they are so used to hearing it. And when I was doing it, I, sometimes I get tired. But then I remind myself, no, you will not always be around them. But do it. So I will, and sometimes I will threaten, I will tell them, listen, because there are three of them, I'll say, listen, the three of you don't have what it takes to stop me from talking. The reason, you know why I say that? I was saying it because I was trying to, I refused to be intimidated by the three of them. So I would say to them, listen, when I shout, say, listen, you two, just, there's nothing you people can do to stress me out. I'm more than all of you. <laughs> and I will talk and talk, oh, do this, you know, arrange your room, pray, have you done your proverbs? And I will go on and on. I go into their room, I pray. They, after a while, they went to report to their father that I used to come and shout in their room when they are sleeping <laughs> at night. Say, mom, nobody, there's nothing happening in this room. I'll say, no, I'm sensing something. <laughs> then I will go anointing oil, middle of night, take anointing oil, pour. Mom, nothing is happening in this room. I say, you don't, it's not you that will tell me, it is me that knows whether there's something happening. My husband will think, me both can hear your noises. You know what I tell him? Yeah, you did not carry them for nine months. And I would, and these were some of the things I was trying to teach. Now they've left home. And listen, moms, if you're a mother here, you're a new mom, listen, if you discipline your children, it's going to pay off. It will pay off. We're on a family call. We usually have these family calls that we do every Sunday. And we're on the family call. And one child said, Oh, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't join the call. I have to go because I am moving out of my current room. Why are you moving out of the current room? Say, ah, mom, I can't stand the way the boys in my room are so dirty. I said, huh? <laughs> really? These people that I'm always harassing. She said, no, 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 mom, no, 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 no. Some people don't have home training. <laughs> you know, clearly that language is mommy's language. So I said, oh, really? Say, yes. Can you imagine somebody will eat burger and leave it in the dustbin and not... Well, I went from spring break, came back, and went on and on and on. Their father was looking at me, are you okay now? <laughs> so he's gone up. And yet, I may not have realized that I left. Meaning, if I stay in this room, it's not my mother's voice I'm hearing now. I don't, the thing I'm seeing, I don't feel comfortable with it. So as we're teaching our children, we have to teach them not just by what we say, but by what they see. It was John and Lisa Bever who they married for 40 years. They have three sons. I absolutely love them, um, two um, American preachers. And they were asking them a question. They said, you know, how is it that your three sons who are now in their 30s are so committed to the Lord? And, we, you know, we always hear that pastor's kids, you know, lose focus and they don't follow God and, and all of that. And, of course, many of us as people who raise children in Christian homes, we always have that fear that would our children follow the Lord? So I wanted to hear their answer. And this is what they said. They said they didn't even do Bible study with the children throughout because the children didn't like it. Okay? When they asked the children later on, how come, even though you guys didn't do Bible study at home, they said this is what they saw their parents do. So if you're not reading your Bible, please don't expect your children to read their Bible. If you're not praying, don't expect your children to pray. And it's not you telling them to go and pray. It's you actually praying. And they see. So all that time that I was shouting in their room in quotes, right? I didn't realize that there was a mirroring that was taking place. So what I noticed is that my children have my style of worship. They worship the same way like me. It's not because I told them worship like this. No. They were, it's a reflection. They were mirroring. 
So I want to encourage moms who are, who are sometimes stressed out in correcting and saying do this and do that and they're getting overwhelmed. Don't be overwhelmed. It will speak. And it's already speaking. I have seen it and now I can say for a fact that it has worked out. So we, we want our children to learn, but we don't want to learn only by what we tell them, but also by what we do. Secondly, we have to pray to know our children, to know them in the things of the spirit, not just know them after the flesh. You can see your child and know their gifts. It's important that you must know. So if I sit here and ask you, each child, can you tell me where their areas of strength are? You should be able to tell me. I want us to go through that exercise ourselves to say, this is how each child is different. I, on my phone, my notes, I have the, an entire folder for each child. I, I, I write all what I consider to be their strengths and what makes them special, each one, so I know. I know their love language, and I've taught them their love language so that they know. And then they know how to see it also in other people and therefore treat people the way they want to be loved or love people the way they want to be loved. Going through that exercise of knowing each child, by you knowing them, what you're doing is you're stewarding them and their gifts. As a mother, if you know what your child's gifts are and you say it, they go out to the world confident. But we also have to do it prayerfully. We have to do it prayerfully. So sometimes you see the child this way, but there's something else that there's more. There's a preacher today we're listening to, Pastor Jerry in, in, in Nigeria, who was talking about how his mom used to pray for him. And she would say, when she's praying for him, she's crying. And the boy used to ask his mom, why do you cry when you pray for him? He said, because the, the call that God, that God has on your life is so strong. I don't even think I know what to do to raise you properly for it. Now, we know what we're seeing in his life today, right? But his mother prayed it into being what it is that you see today. She didn't even know what it was. She probably thought he was going to be a doctor, healing this, you know, working in hospitals. But that was not what it was. And she prayed it to the extent that he came to, to become what he is today. So in asking God, reveal to me this child, let me know him in the things of the spirit. Let me see him beyond what I see now. I've had situations where I'm praying for each child, and it, sometimes it's praying in the spirit, and I just feel there's something wrong. And the minute I sense there's something wrong, I start to pray and pray and pray, and I ask myself, if I didn't sense that there was something wrong, what would, ha would have happened? And in some cases, we found out there was something actually very wrong. And God reveals it to us, and I'm like, oh my goodness, that was what I was sensing. There are times I've also prayed about their future, and prayed for their wives, and have picked up things in the spirit about their wives, just because I was praying. We cannot birth the promise with ojulason. Can somebody translate? With ordinary eye. We cannot birth the promise with ojulason. We are people of the spirit. So there's an amount of prayer that we need to intercede for our children consistently, not just in terms of prayer, but also the example that we set. So if we are not living a life of value, then our children cannot replicate it. We can't beat them to become. No. So Lisa and John Bever said, the reason why you have these pastor's kids who become this or that is because what their parents say is not what they do. <laughs> what the parents say is not what they do. So the children are revolting. This is fake. This is fake. I called one of my children. I was saying I have this program I was going on to. And he said, let me pray for you. And as he prayed for me, he quoted a scripture that I didn't even know. So I went back to go and look at the scripture in the Bible. And God reminded me, said, when I said shikale, shikale means sit down in my language. When I say rest over these children, calm down. Be calming down. <laughs> Be calming down. But I will not calm down. Because you know sometimes you pray and you still don't believe. You understand? You just be praying. And sometimes I say, Father, help my own belief. But I'm praying. Wherever they are, just help me. And when he showed that scripture, what he was basically doing was praying like we pray. He was praying like he hears his parents pray. That's what he was doing. Because we pray the word. That's how we pray. So it's not, you can't, you can't fake it. 
Now, if they go, not that they won't go out of line. They may go out of line, but they have a sense in which this is who we are. They have an anchor. So my charge to mothers today, you guys are already doing a great job. Let's take it a notch higher. If we are not like myself, I'm listening to myself and I'm saying, how do I take it a notch higher? I've listened, I list, I've read what uh, Susanna Wesley said. She said, each child, one day, right? It's also by the traditions that we put in place. So in my own case, I take each child, we have a private date so we can engage. Because when there are three of them together, you know, <laughs> there are three with you. Aha. But sometimes you now have to separate them, one child, so that you can have a one-on-one -on -one with that one child. And putting these traditions in place, whether it's the lunch, uh, Sunday lunch, or it's the calling, or it's the family meetings, is part of our way of saying, let's reinforce our values. So if we teach our children the values, not just by what we say, by the actions that we take. It's not enough to just by the actions that we take, but also by the things that we repeat over and over again. Don't stop the repetition because it enhances retention. Don't stop the repetition because it enhances don't stop the repetition. And sometimes we are overwhelmed by it. And there's, there's some of us here who are not yet mothers. And I remember that I started going to church pretty early. And many of the things that I learned as a teenager, as a young person in church, were things I was now able to practice. So now today, you have people say, I wish I heard this earlier. Yes, you are lucky to hear it early so that you can now begin to practice. Okay. So know the way. The scripture says, study to show thyself approved, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightfully dividing the word of truth. Show the way, and I use the example of Lisa and John and Lisa Bever, which is, I said, exemplify, not just talking, but also go the way with them. So know the way, show the way, and go, with, go the way with them. Don't let them get lost. As our children go off, Sometimes there may be a chance that we may step back a bit. Um, but even if you step back a bit in terms of leaving them to become independent, don't leave them spiritually. Don't leave them spiritually. God has a way, Holy Spirit has a way of revealing things to us. And when we go the way with them, we will get knocks, knocks, knocks. Where God is saying, watch here, watch there. Watch there. It is real. The Holy Spirit is not with us just for fancy. It's actually for us to live a practical Christian life. Can we just look at one more scripture? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16, and 1 Corinthians 2, verse 10. Okay. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. And I think I was referencing this when I was speaking earlier on about asking the Holy Spirit to reveal our children to us. Can I get the next scripture? Not just to know them according to the flesh, their strengths and what have you, but what is, God, what is God's intention for them for the future? Okay? 1 Corinthians 2.10. 1 Corinthians 2.10. Not 2 Corinthians. But God, can we read this together? But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. Can we say that again? But God. Okay. Proverbs 22 verse 6 says, Train up your child in the way that he should go, and he will not depart from it. Can we go to Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 5? Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 5. When I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother, I am persuaded is also in you. The genuine faith that was in your grandmother, Eunice. This also reminds me of Richard, uh, Robert Layden. I don't know how many people have re read the book, 
God's Generals. God's Generals, there's a very famous book written by um, a preacher as well called God's Generals. It's like a, a series and stories about people who were responsible for the first Pentecostal movement across the world and uh, the things that they did that worked well and the things that they did that made them fail. And he's very, very passionate. He actually went to heaven at the age of eight. He wrote a famous book called I Saw Heaven at the Age of Eight. Now, when Robert Layden is talking and teaching, he always references his grandmother and his mom and the role that they played in his spiritual growth. So I want us to remember that we are birthing a promise. And each child that we carry is a talent in our trust that is in the world for change that has capacity to do something transformational in the world today. And if we see them as that, and we realize also the trouble and the travail and the turmoil that we've been through to deliver them, and we put back in perspective to say if it was so difficult to deliver this child, then this child cannot be ordinary. And you don't always have to have had an angelic encounter. I didn't have any angelic encounter, but I know that each child is special. And even it's just by their name, I pray their names. Each child, my first child is Mobolowarin. And I say, just as your name is, so shall your steps be. You will walk with the Lord. The second is Oluwa Demeladi Ogo, and I'm saying you're carrying the glory of God. Everywhere you go, you will carry his glory of God. And we are seeing his name, the fulfillment of his, of his name coming to pass every day. I'm looking at Morola Oluwa, and I'm saying, yes, you're carrying the goodness of God in the land of the living. This is my testimony of you. This is the testimony I speak of you over and over again. When I say, Mobolwari, you will walk with the Lord. You'll be like Enoch. You'll be sanctified, set apart. You'll be a Nazarite. You'll be consecrated. When men see you, they will see a relationship with God. What I'm basically saying is speaking the promise over each of them. So even if you don't have a prayer point, pray their names. Because many times the names of our children are special. And we pray it over and over again. And when you see the child, call him his full name. Be prophetic. I am calling you Mobolu Wari. And why I'm calling you that is because you will walk with God. I can't call you that for 21 years and you will not walk with God. It's not possible. Because what I say is what I will see come to pass. Because the Bible says there's power in the word of a king. If I say to this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and I will not doubt in my heart, I will have whatsoever it is that I say. So I have said you walk with God. I have said you carry the glory of God. I have said you God, will see the goodness of God in the land of, because of you. That's prophecy. And it will come to pass because I have said it. So let's go out. Remember that we have this promise that we're carrying. And this promise was in our womb. We delivered it. But we must put in the work to train them so that men can look at them and say, well, your mother was a woman of faith. So I know that that same faith is on the inside of you. Men will be able to look at them and say, ah, you are a young man, but I've seen you walk in faith because of the legacy that you carry, because you carry strong values. And at the end of the day, we'll be able to say, of a truth, we came to this world not just to birth ordinary children, we came to this world to birth transformational agents. God bless you. Hallelujah. What an amazing word. If you don't mind, just keep standing with me. I just want us to, um, there are so many important things that were said today. And uh, I don't want it to just escape without us really praying certain things into being. So I want us to take a prayer point today. In 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1, Paul said something that is so powerful. He said, imitate me as I imitate Christ. And um, there was a word that Minister Tara used when she was ministering, and she said, mirroring, mirroring. What, what your, your children are not just doing what you're saying, they are doing what they are seeing. And I want us to pray this morning and say, Lord, help me to imitate you so that my children can imitate me. Do you know what kind of powerful prayer that is? Where you can stand and say, as long as my children see what I am doing, they will prosper wherever they go. Their values will be strong wherever they go. Because 
There is a purpose. You are birthing a promise. We have to take it seriously. There is something about this child that is going to change the world, that is going to change their community, that is going to change their school. So when she said, if you are not reading your Bible, if you are not praying, don't expect that your child will do that when you tell them to. So I want us to pray that prayer today and say, Lord, help me to imitate you. In the mighty name of Jesus, a very personal prayer point. We all know where we fall short, but by the grace of God, grace shall find you in the mighty name of Jesus. By the grace of God, we will live worthy of the Lord by his grace alone. In the mighty name of Jesus, God Almighty, help us to imitate you, O God, so that our children shall imitate us. In the mighty name of Jesus, help us, O God, to represent you. Help us, O God Almighty, to live your values here on earth, oh God, to live your values in our homes, to live our values, oh God Almighty, when nobody is watching, to live your values, oh God. Father Lord, that when our children hear us speak, oh God, it will be with wisdom, it will be with grace, oh God. Father Lord, it will be with truth, it will be with authenticity, oh God, it will be with kindness in the mighty name of Jesus. When they see us act, it shall be with wisdom, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. The works of the flesh, oh God, shall no longer be represented in our words, shall no longer be represented in our actions in the mighty name of Jesus. As I see my father do, so shall I do. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, O oh God, that you will renew our minds, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, that as we see you beholding your face like a mirror, so we shall transform to look like you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you, O oh God, because your word says that you created us in your image and in your likeness. I pray, Father God, that we will become that image, that we will become that likeness, that the children that have been created in our own image and in our likeness shall look like you in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you all the glory, O oh God, for in Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Amen. Happy, happy, happy Mother's Day to every woman. Can the men just celebrate any woman that's next to you? Can we just give a shout out? to the women. Hallelujah. May God bless you. May God honor you. May God lift you. May God remember you. May God settle you in the mighty name of Jesus for your sacrifices, for your prayers, for your tears, for the things that you deal with that nobody knows. God sees you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Happy Mother's Day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. What an amazing word. Thank you so much. That was awesome, awesome, awesome. 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 It doesn't matter that it's Mother's Day. That word definitely will make me a better father. Um, because all the children committed to my trust. I know what to do now. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Um, in a few moments, we're going to honor God and just receive our offering. I want us to do that, do announcements, get that out of the way. You know, the men have a few things to do, but let's just honor God. Let's worship. Let's bless God. Uh, I know most of you have already given along the, along the way. We do our text to give, but <clears throat> if you want to, you can give our PayPal, text to give. Uh, if you want an envelope, there's one in front of you or online. If you're new, you're not exactly sure what to do, try all of them. Let me know what your favorite is. <laughs> but um, at ALC, we love God. We give not out of obligation, but out of love. Uh, giving for us is, is a thing of trust. And so we're going to do that as we honor God. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing. Uh, also, and later on, I have FD at the end. Just come and greet the church and, and share the benediction. But... You know, FD turned 52 on Friday. Happy, 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 happy birthday. Or uh, like my oldest daughter would say, like, are you sure Uncle FD is not really 25? And you read it wrongly. Um, but happy, happy, happy birthday, FD. Uh, also on Friday was their 22nd wedding anniversary. Happy anniversary. 22 years. Amazing, amazing. And ever so in love. And you guys just... 
you make marriage look easier. Uh, not easy, easier. Um, and I thank you guys for being our marriage role models. Thank you so much, FD and TFD. Uh, later on this week, as you know, on Monday night, tomorrow night at 9 p.m., that's our staple, never changing. It doesn't matter what is happening. Every Monday at 9 p.m., our prayer meeting is via Zoom. It's great. Just join. And we're really, really just going to pray. Uh, many times what we do is the Sunday word, we take it further uh, in the place of prayer. And, and I already have, you know, a bunch of prayer points ready for tomorrow. So if you can, make sure you join tomorrow night, 9 p.m. on Zoom. And then on Wednesdays, as we've been doing uh, for our summer series, which is Bible study coming to a home near you. We've been having all our home meetings. Uh, April was great. Last, last Wednesday was phenomenal. Um, I'm enjoying it because I get to go to different homes. But if you want to go, there's always a home near you. Actually, the last one that we did, Anna and I walked to Bible study. That was pretty cool. You know, just taking a walk and you arrive at a house, Bible study. It's a couple of us where we can share the word, break bread, and really, really just discuss. And so, scan the QR code and register. Uh, if you need child care, there are a few homes that have, not all of them, but you should be able to scan the code and you would, you would get it right there. Okay? All right. So, what we're going to do uh, right after the, the offering, if there's anyone here still doing it, we're going to have the men just come and celebrate all the mothers. And then right after that, uh, have FD come, uh, close us out, and lay a blessing and give the benediction. But once again, from my heart, from ALC, the leadership, I want to say very happy Mother's Day to all the ladies. God bless you. Uh, thank you for everything you do. I'm going to invite Mr. Bidemi. He's the head of our men's ministry, and they have some things lined up for all the ladies. Thanks, BT. Hallelujah. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Um, it's just such an amazing time to be in the presence of God and see all the beautiful women that the Lord has blessed us with. You know, so congratulations. I know I'm trying to be cool, but <laughs> you know. But seriously, happy Mother's Day. We have a couple of things lined up. Um, but first, we have our beautiful daughter, Jada. Jada is going to come up and do a poem, just celebrating all the mothers in the house. Jada. <laughs> Hello, everyone. How are you? Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> um, so I wrote this poem for my mom. And I read it to her this morning, and she was like, as she always does, she's like, oh my God, everybody has to hear this one. And I was like, okay. <laughs> she was like, so many mothers can relate to this. This is how a lot of children feel about their mothers. And after a consensus from my team ministry, I'm sure they all feel the same about you wonderful, beautiful women that we had the pleasure to meet over the time I've got to know all of you. Okay. <laughs> what is a mother? A gift. I lift my eyes as I search for the words to describe a woman so dear, I fear I came up short, as the English lexicon is not enough. Mama, mommy, ama, okasan, madra. What is, uh, what is a mother, a friend? As I cry on your shoulder, you rub my back and pat my head. Real friends don't lie, and you've never played pretend. You are honest, you are kind, and I find you to be the best of companions, my mother and my champion. What is a mother? My rock. She's steadfast, she is strong, she holds me down when things are going wrong. When I say I can't see, you take my hands off my eyes with a smile. What is a mother? Talented, beautiful, amazing, a gift, compassionate, kind, consistent, a friend, strong, powerful, steadfast, a rock. What is a mother? There are so many other words, so many other feelings are felt, but alas, this woman has too many titles under her belt. She is more and more every time I call her to memory. She's greater and greater every time I think about how much I love her and how much she loves me. What is a mother? What is my mother? She is everything. <laughs> It 
Did you ever know that you're my hero? You're everything I would like to be. Yeah. And I could fly higher than an eagle. Oh, oh you are the wind beneath my wings. Did I ever tell you you're my hero? You're everything, everything I wish I could be. You, I could fly higher than an eagle. Cause you are the wind beneath my wings. Oh, come on, guys. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. For all those times you still. Uh, uh. You taught me everything and everything oh, no, you give to me. I always, always keep it inside. inside. My bad. <laughs> You are the driving force in my life. Yes, you did. There isn't anything or anyone that I could be if this wouldn't be right. Even without you by my side. You were there for me to love and care for me when the skies were gray. There to comfort me, and no one else can be when you appear to me. You'll always be, you will always be the girl in my life for all time. Mama, Mama. Shine upon you 
be gracious to you. The Lord with his face towards you and give you peace. God bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon be gracious. Can all the mothers please be on their feet, please, if y'all don't mind. Turn his face, face towards you. And give you peace. And give you peace. All the, all the ladies in the house, please be on your feet. May his favor be upon you. And a thousand yes. generations yes. of your family. Yes. And your children. And their children. upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and your children and your children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and your children Psalm 20, the Lord gave me this scripture in Psalm 20. Let's go to Psalm 20 verse 3. Psalm 20 verse 3. And we're going to declare as priests that the Lord has made leaders of our homes. I want us to pray Psalm 20 verse 3. Everyone join me as we declare this word. May he remember all your offerings and accept all your bond offering, your bond sacrifice. 24, 20, um, verse 4 please. May he grant you according to your heart's desires and fulfill all your purposes. Five, 
We will rejoice in your salvation in the name of our God. We will set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions in Jesus' name. So why don't we just declare this over every mother, every sister, every lady in the house. That the, may, that the Lord remember you. That the Lord send you help from the sanctuary. This sanctuary, this altar. May the Lord send you help. May the Lord send you help in the day of trouble. May the Lord give you peace all around. May the Lord encourage come by you with joy. May he surround you with happiness. Hey, may the fruits of your loins, may the seeds of your of, of your body, let the Lord bless them. May they, may they rise and call you blessed. You will lack nothing in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare this word over every mother, over every sister, over every daughter in this place today. That the Lord bless you. That the Lord help you. That the Lord keep you. That the Lord give you joy. And that we will declare and shout for victory over your testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you all. Happy Mother's Day. God bless you all. Amen. And so as we round up, before I turn it over to PT, a couple of things. We've made provisions for some light refreshments in the fellowship lounge. And we also have gifts for all of the mothers and women here today. So please join all of us, the guys, in the fellowship lounge after service so you can get some nice refreshments and also the gifts we've um, put together. Thank you all. PT. Thank you so much. Excellent job. Um, once again, happy Mother's Day. FD is going to be ministering next Sunday. I'm going to have him come and share the benediction and just greet the church. And so if you don't know, know now. Get ready. Tell someone to tell someone to be here next Sunday. Hello, church. It's always great to be back home. Has anybody been blessed today? No, 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 no. You know, you know, there's that church. Yes, yes, yes. But somehow you will always know a blessing because a blessing never leaves you the same. So a blessing does not just affirm who you are at the time when the blessing came. It changes you to who you are to be. That's how you know a blessing. Has anybody here truly been blessed? that something was dropped in that you know is shifting you to the next level. In that case, would you please, please bless this incredible blessing and vessel that the Lord has blessed us with. I am so proud to be able to call her not just my wife, but my mom also. Because I, in, in a way, when my mom passed on, she passed me over to her. But I'm really, truly grateful. Tara, you are such a blessing. And I told you, I said, you call me your hero. But I told you, you are my superhero. And I mean that I said it to you before I said it to the church. So it's not because I'm here. I'm really, truly blessed to have Tara. Come, please, once again, put your hands together. <laughs> and I'm sure that my children all will testify to the same thing that I've just said. And, and please help me bless... Um, P.T. and Dr. Anna in a very special way. All right. At the request of my superhero, she said, can I just say one thing, just something? So if you sit for a moment and then we'll stand and bless. Just keep, it's okay, just stay there. Happy Mother's Day. And that goes to all, whether you are an aspiring mother, an intending mother, Whether you are, in a sense, an expecting mother or an experienced mother, whichever one it is, happy mother to all the women in the house. And I think that, you know, we, we know that mothers are special. Why? Because many times mothers are the first experience of love in, in humanity that most people ever get. So God is love, and most of the time, the first person, channel, vessel of expressing that love to us was mostly felt by our mother. Now, it's very interesting that the only man that we know that got it wrong was the one who didn't have a mother. Adam, in a way, missed it. Not because he didn't have a father, but because he didn't have a mother. 
And I guess only men can say this, right? <laughs> when the second Adam was going to come about, God fixed it. And said, look, you know, if it's going to get better, I'm going to make sure that that which was missing is what I will ensure that is in place now. So when Jesus was going to come, Jesus couldn't come without a mother. And let's be clear, Jesus could have come any which way. But, but, but God said, no, for the promise, it has to be there. Somebody understand what I'm saying? Adam was blessed. Wherever he put his seed, God said, I will bless it. But the promise was tied to the womb of Sarah. So the promise is always tied to the womb. The blessing can be tied to the seed. So today, once again, I want to appreciate all of the wombs of promise that are here. And for each one of you carrying that womb of promise, I want you to know on behalf of all the men, please, men, confirm what I'm about to say if it resonates with you. Thank you. Thank you for birthing us. And thank you for birthing our sisters. Thank you for birthing our girlfriends. Thank you for birthing our wives. Thank you for birthing the mothers of our children, thank you for being the ones. I said girlfriends, but not from the married point of view. <laughs> I was speaking on behalf of all the men. All right? So that's for the single guys who are hopefully getting, working their way towards it. But thank you so much. We really appreciate you. And I hope that every man will take the time today to find someone who is a mother figure in your life. And just extend that appreciation. Whatever we appreciate grows. The word appreciate has two meanings in English. To express gratitude and to grow in value. And I promise you, as we express gratitude today, you will be surprised. The size of your meats may change. Because but lastly, I just want to say, as you go forward, please, especially to all the women who have not yet supposedly given birth, I want you to understand that there's still a promise in someone that you can mentor. There's a promise. When the Bible says train up, it said train up a child. So it doesn't have to be your child alone. Women, please remember, you can birth the promise even if you didn't birth the child. Somebody get what I'm trying to say? So please accept that commitment and responsibility to say, to as many as I feel connected with, I will seek to birth the promise in you. If I'm a teacher, I'm going to speak over the lives of every student. If I'm a, if I'm a boss, I'm going to speak over the promise of everyone who has been entrusted into my organization to whom I'm leading. Please go ahead. And may the grace of the Lord be upon you as you help to birth the promise of a great nation and a new generation in the name of Jesus. And if you would please just stand. Next week, if it's what I'm sensing that God wants to birth in us, God is calling us to a place of greatness. One of the songs that we sang today in worship spoke about the fact that God is great. And please understand, everything that is created is created in the essence of its creator. The DNA of any product takes its essence from the essence of the creator. So I came to quickly announce to you that not only is God great, but everything that God made, especially everything he created out of himself is great.
Is there anybody created out of God here? Don't settle for success. Next Sunday, we're going to discuss the difference between success and greatness. I'm calling you to the place of who you are. Greatness is not what you are going to be. Greatness is your nature. It's not an aspiration. Your job is to manifest your greatness. Greatness is not a destination. Greatness is your journey. So you are on a journey of greatness, not a journey to greatness. My job is to see how I can help you recognize how to be who you are. So please do everything that you can. If you know someone you truly love, someone who you know and you sense is crying greatness but is not yet manifesting it, do everything you can to bring them to church next week Sunday. And you will be grateful that they came and they will forever be indebted to you for bringing them. Will somebody bring someone to church next week? Would you try? Would you try? Are you sure? Do you know the name of the person? Have you thought about somebody? The person you are going, just one person, you know? Call the name of that person out, just where you are now. <laughs> eh? you, you know the person, Abi? All right, so, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to release the beauty and the grace of God upon you because as you become the light of God, the people will be drawn to the brightness of your rising. The reason why people are, are going to follow you to where you go on Sunday is that they want to become like who you are on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I'm going to say to her, to, just in case somebody heard that now, the reason why someone is going to follow you to where you go on Sunday is because they want to be like you on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So, so I just want to, to encourage you, please bring someone to the source, your source. And so may the grace of the Lord be upon you. May he cause his beautiful face, the light of his countenance to shine upon you. And may God give you peace and peace means nothing missing, nothing broken. It means wholeness. May God settle you on every side. And may God turn your cries in prayer into tears of thanksgiving with testimonies that abound in the mighty name of Jesus. May every prayer that you have prayed last week become your testimony for this week. May the ones that you have given up on, may the reminder, the remembrance of God come upon that matter in the mighty name of Jesus. And I just felt like I wanted the choir to just minister that song again, but this time I want you to speak to someone as they minister the blessing. I want you to be the one that says the blessing to somebody. If you need to look at the screen for the wordings, but please, as I am empowering you to bless somebody on behalf of God. So find someone. Do this. Do this passionately. Passionately. And your family and your children and your children and your children may his favor be upon you and look at them in the eye. Look at them. Let them know you are blessing them. And your family. And your children. And your children. And your children. May his favor be upon you. And a thousand generations. And your family. And your children. And their children. And their children. May his Go before you and behind you and beside you, all around you and within you. He is with you. Come on. He is with you. In your going, in the evening, in your coming, and your going, and your weeping and rejoicing. He is for you. He is for 
bless you all. Happy Look forward to seeing you. Um, so ladies, we want you to please go to the fellowship room so you can get um, the goodies that the men specially prepared for y'all. God bless you. Happy Mother's Day! Happy Mother's Day! <laughs>